There is no need for an introduction between these two great decks. Salomon Great is going to again start off by going first, normal summoning the Flame Buffalo, using it into a Link Summon for Salomon Great Bay Links. Now, how these two monsters are chain linked one to another, Flame Buffalo being chain link one, Bay Links being chain link two, the opponent would not be able to Ash Blossom the Flame Buffalo, meaning Bay Links will be able to add that Salomon Great Sanctuary from the deck to the hand, and then as chain link one resolves, Buffalo discards the C Archiver to draw two additional cards. Salomon Great has so many ways to stop interactions with the opponent, preventing Ash Blossom from hitting pivotal cards, and I'm going to show you a few, as Synapse Mining is going to be activated after the Salomon Great Sanctuary, discarding the Jack Jaguar to add the Salomon Great Gazelle from the deck to the hand. Now, a bit of a ruling for you guys, if you added Gazelle from the deck to the hand with Synapse Mining, you can special summon it, even if it wasn't in the hand during the time that your Salomon Great Jack Jaguar or your Salomon Great Monster was sent to the graveyard. Also, since you summon Gazelle to where a Link Arrow points to, Z Archiver can trigger its effect as Chain Link 2, preventing your opponent from responding to the Gazelle with a card like Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. Those two monsters immediately used for a Link Summon to Solomon Great Mirage Stalio, detaching the Gazelle to be able to special summon a Solomon Great monster to the side of the field. Since Jack Jaguar is already in the graveyard, then a different Solomon Great monster known as Solomon Great Spinny is going to hit the field. Salomon Great is going for a big brain play, using those two monsters to make Sunlight Wolf and then Sunlight Wolf to make itself again. Using its effect to be able to get the Salomon Great Rage from the graveyard to the hand, Jack Jaguar to shuffle in Salomon Great Sunlight Wolf number one, summoning under Sunlight Wolf to use its effect to add the Gazelle back from the deck to the hand. Salomon Great just reloaded its entire hand just off of playing some simple cards. It's really powerful how this deck can operate by summoning Spinny to the side of the field. And the new wave is using both the Spinny and the Jack Jaguar for a Link Summon into IP Masquerina. Now, the reason why Masquerina is just so good in the Salomon Great strategy is because after you use your Salomon Great back row cards that require you to have a second linked monster, your IP Masquerina can now link off your Sunlight Wolf for another powerful monster. Whether it's a disruption or just an indestructible monster, you get to choose. Dino's going ahead and start off with Dino Wrestling Pancatrops. Using its effect to destroy the IP Masquerina, it's going to be met with a Salomon Great War as suspected. You don't want to use your IP Masquerina too early. Normal Sonic Soul Eating of a Raptor to the side of the field. Its effect allows you to take one dinosaur monster and either add it to your hand or send it to your graveyard. Now, Soul Eating is probably the best dinosaur monster in the deck because it gets you into your most critical pieces. But this isn't just a dinosaur deck. This is Shadow Dino. So you guys get to see how the interaction with the dino aspect and the Shadow aspect being able to work together in a pretty decent cohesion. This time around, Ultimate Conductor Tyranno is going to be added. It looks like Shadow Dino's win condition is to get two dinosaur monsters in the graveyard and then deal with whatever Link Summon monster is going to be next. Perform H Hat Tricker being special summoned since there are more than two monsters on the field immediately being used for an Exceed Summon into number 60 Duggarus. Now this is an attempt of Shadow Dino trying to get into some of its important cards, hopefully getting into a card that would get rid of a monster that the Salomon Great player would go ahead and summon. Digger is detaching two materials to draw two cards. Now you have to discard one card from the hand, and to be honest with you guys, the Duggarus' second effects don't really matter if you're just going to go ahead and win the game. But from a Trick Clown was sent to the graveyard to Widow Special Summon itself, but it looks like we have a DD Crow being activated. Not necessarily hitting the Trick Clown, hitting a Dinosaur Monster to prevent the Ultimate Conductor Tyranno from being played for now. Dinos will probably have to find another way to get a Dinosaur Monster to the graveyard because DD Crow is definitely stopping it if they have another Dinosaur Monster. Dinos linking off again. They're going to go ahead and make a Niner Cerberus targeting the IP Mascarena. Mascarena is going to be chained to the Cerberus' effect being able to special summon a huge big daddy monster. This is the new Salomon Great win condition, Mech Mech Crusade Avermax. Not only does it destroy any monster that it battles that special summon, because it will always win that battle pretty much, it also cannot be targeted. And since IP Masquerina was used for its link summon, it cannot be destroyed by non-destruction card effects. This card is insane, really hard to get over. Whoa, you could say it's that type of play, ladies and gentlemen. Looking at the Magnite Crusade Avermax, there is a way to out this card, and it's fairly simple. 
It almost reminds me of certain formats where you had to play certain cards to out certain cards and it just happened to be that card. Mega Knight Crusadia Avermax does have a drawback. If you summon a Mega Knight Crusadia Avermax yourself, you can attack into the opponent's Crusadia Avermax, your monster being Chain Link 1, their monster being Chain Link 2, your Avermax will always win. Miscellaneous Ceres finding itself to a Drac Alio, and it looks like Dinos just might be going for that route to be able to beat this Mac Knight Crusade Avermax. Using both of those monsters for a link summon into Nightmare Unicorn, Unicorn's effect to discard one card from the hand to the graveyard, that's gonna put the Salamon Great Moraz Stalio off the field. Now, I don't wanna say that this was a, a misplay of sorts, but this definitely wasn't, I, I wouldn't say the most optimal play. As you guys are gonna say, Perform Age Damage Juggler does go to the graveyard, but it, the dinos are gonna follow up by activating a card where you're just like, uh, I can kind of see what you're doing, but both of them, you kind of need both of them in the graveyard, so it is what it is. Following up, dinos are going to be using a spell card in Fossil Dig, and now instead of adding a Solidity because that effect was already used, it's gonna add a Giant Rex, and now you guys are seeing what I'm talking about a you know discarding giant rex to the graveyard is probably what you want to do every single time and in this particular situation it's just stuck in the hand unless you can make another nightmare monster then don't really see what's going on here perform age damage juggler being activated from the graveyard to add a perform age hat tricker and ultimate conductor tyranno can be summoned right now use it for a link to probably into nightmare phoenix which could discard the giant rex for a letter play and then you can make the Mac Knight Crusade Avermax. There is your out, ladies and gentlemen. Shadow Dinos could break the Salomon Great Board with their own Avermax. The only unfortunate thing is that this Shadow Dino Sword deck doesn't play Avermax. So we are going to be going into game two. Salomon Great being able to steal game one, basically because you can't out the monster that it has. And it actually has the opportunity to go first again, using Foolish Burial to send C Archiver from the deck to the graveyard. Salomon Great is, I don't want to say boring, but Salomon Great does have the same plays. I personally think that consistency is a, a, a pillar of, of good decks. You need to have a deck that can consistently do the same thing over and over again. But to some players, they may feel consistency is bad. They like drawing brick cards. I, I don't know what to tell you. But <laughs> Salomon Great Pain Links is going to find itself to the graveyard through Flame Buffalo's effect with the Bay Links also being able to search the Salomon Grant Sanctuary and then being able to fetch two additional cards from the deck to the hand. Following up, it looks like that Salomon Great Sanctuary is going to be activated and then the Salomon Great Spinny spells summon under the Bay Links to be able to spell summon the Archiver to the side of the field. Both of those monsters used for an Exceed Summon into Salomon Great Mirage Stelio and Mirage Stelio's effect detaching the Salomon Great Spinny to be able to special summon. Here is our first misplay, I would say. It's gonna special summon the Salomon Great Jack Jaguar to the side of the field. And the reason why I feel like that is a misplay because Salomon Great Gazelle would have been a better choice, mainly because now you have Gazelle on your side of the field. You can pot a Desires for later on. But I mean, it's not something huge. Salomon Great Sunlight Wolf finding itself into another Salomon Great Sunlight Wolf. And now you'll be able to add, I mean, I guess nothing from your graveyard to your hand. No trap card to add this time around, but it looks like Solomon Great have another great play as Jack Jack Warrior is gonna be summoned. Using it with the Mara Stalio for IP Mascarina, it is basically, hey, look, you couldn't beat Mac Knight Crusade Avermax last time. Will you be able to do it again? Will this be a 2-0 scrape by Solomon Great? Or will Solomon Great be proven as just Solomon Good? Dino Wrestler Packetrops being special summoned to the side of the field again. Being able to rid itself of that Salomon Great Roar. That's one disruption down. A couple more to go. Shadow of Fusion being activated. Salomon Great has no responses. So now Shadow Dino will be able to fusion summon from the deck. Since Salomon Great controls monsters from the extra deck to the side of the field. Sending Shadow Hedgehog to the graveyard. And then following up with another monster. Really excited. I don't think that another dark monster would be appropriate, but Trick Clown is definitely an appropriate target. That's gonna be able to special summon our Bay El Shadow Construct to the side of the field. Now, this has been the first time Shadows have been on this channel since the Forbidden List has given Shadow Construct the three. And I have to say, it's definitely a boost. Shadow Construct being able to activate its effect, uh, Form Age Trick Clown, and Shadow Hedgehog being able to activate their respective effects. 
being able to send shut all cards from the deck to the graveyard add shut all cards from the deck to the hand and get an additional monster all off of one card is what channels do best it is a great going second deck and i know you guys want to see the deck profile let's try to get this video to as many likes as possible ladies and gentlemen let's try to destroy that like button let me know that you guys want to see this super secret shadow dino spice so it looks like shadow squamata is going to be added this time around and shadow beast is sent to the graveyard that'll net an additional draw card and Shadow Dino is trying to board build. The first thing you need to do is force the IP Masquerina's effect to trigger. Uh, and you want it to trigger into a Nightmare Unicorn or whatnot, get them that extra disruption. But we know that that's pretty much not going to happen. But using the Shadow Construct and the Trick Clown for Link Summon into Nightmare Cerberus, that'll be a way to trigger the effect of the IP Masquerina. Discarding Before Mage, Damage Juggler, both of those monsters will be linked off into the Mech Knight Crusade Avermax. Meet your daddy yet again, and it's placed in the main monster zone for extra flex. That flexation, man, that's just too strong. So now, uh, Shadow Dino is gonna have to deal with the exact same problem. We know that Shadow Dino does not play Mech Knight Crusadia Avermax itself. This is uh, kind of something you don't want to deal with, a monster that can't be targeted, can't be destroyed by card effects, basically can't be destroyed by battle. It's like... Yeah, it, it, it's a problem in today's Yu-Gi-Oh! And not a lot of people are playing it. Following up, it looks like Reform H Hat Tricker is going to be special into the side of the field because there are at least two monsters in the field. Linking off the Cerberus and the Hat Tricker, I feel like we've seen this before, and it didn't work out. Making the Nightmare Unicorn would be able to get rid of the Mech Knight Crusade Avermax. I mean, I guess it'd be able to get rid of the Solomon Great Sanctuary, but... I, I just don't see how this would pan out in favor for Shadow Dino. I mean, maybe just making a generic Link 2 with arrows pointing down, maybe that is the game plan. Aside from Lord Lambda is going to hit the side of the field, but a normal summon has not been committed yet. Shadow's gonna go ahead and do that by normal summoning Shadow Squamata. Why? A super polymerization! Whoa! And it looks like Mech Knight Crusade Avermax is a light monster. Super Polymerization does not target. It just fuses both of those monsters to be able to make a Shadow Construct. Now, here is where we have some effects going off. Shadow Construct should have activated its effect. Shadow Squamata is going to activate its effect. And here is where I want to say there is another misplay. Uh, Mech Knight Crusade Avermax does have the ability to bounce a card on the field. And it would be advantageous to bounce a Shadow Construct. At this point in time, Solomon Great would have probably, to be honest with you guys, they would have just scooped right here because it's really hard for this deck to come back from an Ultimate Conductor Tyranno after breaking the board. And that's just something that this deck does. And if you guys were wondering, well, Cali Effect, where is that Ultimate Conductor Tyranno? Well, there you have it. So really, it, it's not necessarily a misplay. It's just Shadow's just being there for show. But at the same time, you guys should probably resolve effects. Who knows? Maybe it could have been a little different depending on the draw. Solomon Great starting off with Foolish Burial again to be able to send that Sea Archiver from the deck to the graveyard. That Sea Archiver is just really good. It's one of the cards that you want to get to your graveyard if you can. I've seen Solomon Greats play multiple copies of this card and I really don't blame him. Normal summoning the Flame Buffalo. It looks like consistency is key for Solomon Great. And then following up with a Solomon assigned at Mining, sending Solomon Great Spinny from the hand to the graveyard. As you guys know, that'll be able to bag a uh, good Solomon Great Gazelle. Gazelle's effect will be able to send Jack Jaguar or a trap card to the graveyard. Solomon Great Roar is going to find itself to the graveyard. And then they're going to continue to do normal plays. Now, Solomon Great Bay Lynx is going to be summoned to the side of the field. And I still love how Solomon Greats still have continuity, even with the cards that they are limited on their list. Now, if you guys like continuity or just really solid match, check out my boys, Imperium Duelist. You can get a mat like this using the code Cali Effect 10 off. You get, guess what, ladies and gentlemen, 10% off your entire purchase. Now, that is too strong. Solomon Great's going ahead and activating the Solomon Great Sanctuary. No graphic for that because it looks like our graphic station is pretty bored. Special summoning the Spinny under to the Bay Links and then triggering the Sea Archiver, making an XC play right into the Solomon Great Mirage Stallio. Now, I mean, I'm not really bored of this deck because I'm the guy that does all the graphics, but I just forgot to do it. 
Solomon Great Mirage Stallio being special summoned to the side of the field, detaching the Spinny, not the Gazelle this time, to spell summon the Solomon Great Falco. And as you guys can see, it looks like Solomon Great is having a different game plan. I mean, once you've already been super polymerization once, you kind of don't want to be super polymerization again. So you're not going to go into the Crusadia Mac Knight Avermax this time around, making the Solomon Great Sunlight Wolf to make a second Sunlight Wolf, and then going ahead and setting the Solomon Great War. The Solomon Great Jack Jack War is in the graveyard, so it can return the Sunlight Wolf to spell summon itself to the side of the field, and then be able to make a threat that should all dinos have a really hard time handling. Now, I do think in this particular situation, if another monster could have been summoned, IP Masquerina still could have been put on the board, but I necessarily don't see how an additional monster could have been played, but it is what it is. Solomon Great Jack Jaguar being special summoned under the Sunlight Wolf, returning the Gazelle, and now it looks like Solomon Great Falco and Jack Jaguar will be used for an Exceed Summon, and this is literally half of the meta's weakness, Abyss Dweller. Abyss Dweller will just lock you out of the graveyard and some decks will really, really struggle to go against that. And the fact that, uh, you know, if you break this monster off the board, you still can't spell summon or you still can't activate those graveyard effects. It's just a really powerful guard. Abyss Dweller being able to activate and resolve on uh, Shadow Dino's uh, standby phase. How will they be able to break their board without being able to get some of their most critical effects? Well, it just so happens that Shadow Dino's Happened to open the Shadow Fusion. Good old Shadow Fusion. It's going to be met with the Salomon Great Roar. Did we forget that that card existed? I mean, what were you thinking? That's a card that you want to resolve. Salomon Shadow Dino already put into a corner. Do they have anything else? Because we know that this Salomon Great deck has locked you completely out of the graveyard. Is there any other cards you want to summon? Soul Leading Offer after being normal summoned to the side of the field using its effect to search. It's going to be met with Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring, but no, it looks like there is a counter to the counter. Miscellaneous Sarah is being chained to the Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring, protecting the Soul Eating and allowing you to add a dinosaur monster from the deck to the hand. I got to say, ladies and gentlemen, whoa, that is crazy. Sometimes you got to have it, and maybe, just maybe, the Salomon Great or the Shadow Fusion was bait for the Shadow Roar. Knowing that Macell was in the hand, you could protect your soul eating. This was actually big brain play by Shadow Dino. Dino still has a board to break and cannot use those monster effects in Graveyard. Macell will be able to protect the dinosaur activated or from activated effects. But the unfortunate thing is that Marcel will not be able to banish itself to Special Summon to the side of the field due to the effect of Abyss Dweller, and Ultimate Conductor Tyranno seems to be the monster of choice to be added to the hand. So is there another way to break Salomon Greats and get this game back into Shadow Tyranno's favor? And it looks like there is, as El Shadow Fusion is going to be activated. What are you doing, Shadow Dino? You play Super Polymerization. You play Shadow Fusion. Now, El Shadow Fusion, fusing Soul Eating and your Shadow Beast to make a Shadow Winda? And now there are two dinosaur monsters in your graveyard. You can banish both of those monsters to be able to spell summon that ultimate conductor Tyranno to the side of the field. And guess what? This bad puppy can attack every single one of your opponent's monsters once each. And yeah, he is 3,500 attack. The El Shadal window prevents players from special summoning more than once. I mean, seeing that the only special summon that Shadal Dinos need is the Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, it kind of does not matter. And now Ultimate Conductor Tyranno is going to declare his attack on Salomon Great Sunlight Wolf, which means that Salomon Great is going to banish that Bay Lynx, trying to protect that Sunlight Wolf. But now it's going to go ahead and attack the Abyss Dweller and then the Mirage Stallio. This is madness, ladies and gentlemen. This is Sparta. This is Ultimate Conductor Tyranno at its finest, being able to flip opponent's monsters face down as a quick effect by destroying cards in your hand. You can destroy some of those Shadow monsters and gain their effects. You can also prevent your opponent from spell summoning through Shadow Winda. Everybody gets one, ladies and gentlemen. Shadow is not in the best spot right now, losing all of its real estate and taking a chunk of damage putting them now in a danger zone. We know that Shadow Dino can follow up with some mean plays if left unchecked. What does Salomon Great have in response to such a drastic board? 
Do they have anything? Will this game be over or will Salomon Greats take it back, ignite a fire inside of them and be Salomon Great? What will happen? The suspense is killing me, ladies and gentlemen. And it looks like, no, it looks like Salomon Great is going to take the L. Thank you guys so much for watching another segment of the Cali Effect. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a like. And if you really did, consider joining our Patreon. We have so many awesome rewards. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. But most of all, enjoy. I hope you guys are having a great day. Like I am.